What if Naruto had All Tail Beast Part 3? Let's go. Naruto had the Renegade now, but he wanted more. He wanted the Sharingan. He wanted power and knowledge like no other. He wanted to become the very best. And whilst most of the Tail Beasts applauded this, Kramo was scared. Scared that Naruto, even as cute as he was, and as close as they were, they were family. And yet, Kurama doubted it. What if Naruto became like, like him, like Madara? What if Naruto, once able to use the Sharingan, would control the tailed beast? What if he would become a tyrant like the ones that came before him? But no, it couldn't happen. It could never happen. Kurama had faith in Naruto, and even through his worries, he kept strong. He helped Naruto even though there was a possibility that that same power could control Kurama in the future. He believed that his brother, basically, would not use his powers to control his family, his siblings. Naruto would use it for good, just like that they had taught him. And so, Naruto trained, and trained, and trained, and trained. He unlocked many abilities of his Renegon. He was able to magically pull and push stuff in the air, though it did have a cooldown. He was able to see clear as day. He was able to do practically anything. He had the power of life and death on his fingertips or his eyes, whatever you want to call it. There seemed no end to his power, and yet he wanted more. And so, once having, at least in his mind, mastered the Renegon, he set out to do the same for the Sharingan. He tried using the same way that he got the Renegon, letting the chakra flow through his eyes. But this meditative state didn't work. That's when he asked Kurama about it. It would be uncomfortable, but Kurama was the expert on anything in Chia, especially the Sharingan. He'd experienced the power firsthand, and so he'd know most about it. Hmm. So you truly wish to learn this power? Well, if you can, somehow, color me oppressed. But the way to unlock it for a real Uchiha is to harness one's hatred and anger. Hatred to people, to things, even to life itself. Though, really, sadness will do just fine as well. You need to harness your emotions, Naruto. And unlike staying cool-headed, you need to let them out. The redness in the Sharingan is said to come from anger itself, as well as the fire of the sun, as the Sharingan eyes can hurt its host even more than their enemies. Be wary, Naruto, and be careful. And with that, Naruto set out to try. Without even sitting down and starting to meditate, he started punching a tree till his knuckles hurt. The tree fell over, but so did Naruto. Now laying on his back, Naruto tried to grab the sky. He thought back to all his confusion, anger, sadness. He didn't have a family or friends. He barely even knew any humans except for that one time he met the Uchiha kid. His own family, his blood family, didn't even want him. He was seen as a monster by his own mother. And with all that combined, something sparked. Naruto let out a roar, and for that moment, he was the king of the jungle. Well, it was only a forest, but you know. Birds flew high, scared of this beast, and Naruto stood up, seeing the birds, but they looked differently. But it was not the Renegon's power. He couldn't feel the might at his fingertips to push, pull, or even summon the dead. No, this was 
different. It really was his hatred. His hatred materialized as power. Now, I must explain. The Renegon that he got was obviously not as strong as Otsutsuki Renegon. So, I mean, that's pretty obvious, as I already said before. But many of you will probably asking, how did that even happen? How did Naruto get a Renegon out of practically nowhere? Well, let me explain. The Tilt Beasts all carry the Otsutsuki power. They are practically the sons of Hagoromo, and each have a part of the Tail Beast power. The Tail Beast being the Ten Tails, therefore all having a part of Kaguya's power. And when all combined, living in Naruto and helping him grasp power, it materialized into the Rinnegan itself. But with that Utsutsuki power, also came darkness, the Sharingan, if you can't tell. Sure he has power, but he has a lot of anger too. The only question is, what will Naruto do with that anger? Now, Naruto tries his best to control this power the next few days. He tries to control his anger, but it doesn't really work as well as he thought at least. He seems to only be able to summon the true Sharingan when he's really angry. Like, really angry. Only when he imagines his own family hating him, an outcast of his own village, with no one to turn to, only then can he access the power of the Sharingan. And yet, that's exactly what Kurama feared. Naruto shouldn't get caught up in all this hatred. He needs love in his life. And with that, I don't mean a person. I mean love for nature, for life itself. Moreover, Naruto has a family. All the Nine-Tailed Beasts love him in their own particular way. Krama is like a brother. Matatabi is more like an older sister or perhaps even a mother. Shukaku is a little brother or perhaps a cousin. You know, we all have that funny cousin. That's Shukaku. Naruto has his family. They're just different. But does Naruto realize this? Who knows? As I was saying, Naruto continues to train his eyes, his Sharingan powers, and slowly starts being able to control the one Tomoe. With that, Kurama explains how to up his power, though that would require just more emotion. But that's exactly what he was trying to diminish, letting him control his power rather than just be a fit of rage. It seems like he just needs to backtrack on what he was trying to train. But Kurama assures him, the training was not for nothing. The control will be necessary to not become insane. Especially for you, I'm unsure of your path. You're not an Uchiha. You're not made for this power. And yet, you have it. It's quite disturbing, if I might say. But I am curious as well. Can you... No. Let's just continue to train, Naruto. As Kurama was left there in silence, thinking about the true power of the Sharingan, not the one, two, or three Tomoe, or even the master three Tomoe Sharingan, but more. The Mangekyo Sharingan, one that could only be used when true anger or sadness has been felt, such as the death of a friend. Or, in Hashirama and Madara's case, Madara's brother. After three more months, Naruto is finally able to use the controlled version of the three Tomoe Sharingan. Now mind you, that's not mastered, but he can control it. And is able to use it at any point, without having to first go through a whole minute of manifesting his anger. Now at this point, he's kind of let go of the Renegon. It's not useless, obviously, but he's been so focused on the Sharingan that it just faded out of importance. But trust me when I say he's gonna use it in the future. But Naruto's learning of the Sharingan has been so fast that it baffled even Kurama, who's seen some of the strongest 
Uchiha in all of history, such as Madara, who even that took longer to master the Sharingan than someone who isn't even an Uchiha. It's incredible, but scary. If Naruto, at this young age of only six years old, can become so powerful, what would his future entail? What would he become when he's all grown up? When he can manifest the true power of nine-tailed beasts and his own weird powers? Keke Genkai that he really shouldn't even own. Now, it's at this point that with feeling all of his emotions and bringing them up day after day, he gets really lonely. As in, borderline depression lonely. To combat this, the tailed beasts have an idea. They could try to manifest in real life as actual things, though they have to find a way. Naruto though is taking a different approach to this. He doesn't know of the tailed beast trying to give him company, and so he sets out to try to do something with his own clones, if that makes sense. He knows in reality they're just illusions, though what if he can give them material? What if he can make them real? He tries to form them out of sand, dirt, clay, even wood, though he can't bend the material like any other. For some reason, wood doesn't work like other elements. He asks the tailed beast about this, and they talk about Hashirama and the wood style jutsus. They're extremely powerful, yet very rare, and nowadays, practically extinct. Though, once again, not an ability that Naruto could have. They're for Senji, and they count as a Keke Genkai. And so the Tailed Beast dismissed this as an idea for Naruto's power, clones, or anything, really. But once Naruto hears that he can't have a certain power, He's hellbent on getting it. And so he sets out once more to obtain the legendary power of the wood style. He starts meditating once more, feels the earth, and then touches a tree. Nothing. Though after staying in the same position, not moving, barely even breathing, he starts hearing the tree. Trees are quite similar to humans, you see. And they kind of have blood of their own. And so Naruto starts hearing liquid inside the tree moving up and down, water being sucked into the roots. Naruto felt the wood and started pushing his own chakra into the tree. What happened was the tree itself shattered. Naruto had a little too much chakra. And so instead of bending the element to its will, he kind of just destroyed it. That would do for another day. That's going to be it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like, subscribe, and see you in the next one. Peace!